Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello dear listener, dear viewer, my name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. I'm coming to you once again from our makeshift studio at Black. I do my best to bring impactful, powerful, life-changing content each and every time. Uh, this time I've brought a repeat guest and the author of multiple books, including the book we're going to talk about, which is What Amazing Employees Do. Uh, author, multiple author, cre uh, you know, content creator, speaker, coach, Mr. Mumpuluki Magwana. Uh, welcome to the studio once again. Sir, thank you so much for hosting me once again. You are doing quite an amazing job. Mm. Uh, I've been looking at the content you have been creating over time. And, you know, the response now people are getting used, you know, that we have people who are making a difference in our communities. Mm. And it's through your platform that now people can extensively listen to interviews. You know, normally we have to interviews five minutes, 10 minutes, mm. but these kind of interviews are really life-changing. Mm. You know, out of 10 nuggets, you find that someone is life and business is mm. really transformed. But otherwise, my name is Magwana, and what I do every day is working with employees from different organizations. We work on performance and cultivating high-performance culture, and also cultivating effectiveness within workplaces. That mm. is why my recent book, What Amazing Employees Do. But otherwise, I work with RB2 as well every Tuesdays, a segment called Empowering Your Vision, mm. since 2016, where we talk about leadership development, youth empowerment, and all that. Uh, as well known as you are, there might be one or two guests who don't know exactly what your profession is and what you do for a living specifically. Yeah. Um, what would you say in summary is your profession or your vocation? All right, my full-time job is coaching and writing. Mm. So if I'm not coaching employees from one organization, I am writing books. If I'm not writing books, I'm doing one-on-one -on -one coaching on career development. I specialize mostly on career development. During the lockdown, I did a certification on you know, being a career coach and a career counselor. And it has opened so much eyes for me to mm -hmm. be able to focus on helping individuals to make transition on the, this ever-changing job market. So that is what I do. Part of the reason you and I get along so beautifully is because you're my namesake. <laughs> And you're also a speaker, yes, like sir. me. Yes. But uh, but let's 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 get to the reason we are here, which is what amazing employees do. This is a wonderful book, and I've I've received great reviews about it already. Yeah. What is the inspiration for the book, and when did you write it? All right. The the, the book I've written it during the lockdown, mm. but the second part of it I've always written it because it's the major book, bigger than this one, is mm. the corporate guide to creating high performance culture. So during the lockdown, I realized that, you know, thousands, if not millions of people are going to lose their jobs, mm. not because they're not skillful, not because they don't have the certain skill set, but because they don't know how to make transition during this ever changing job market, mm. which is which I talked a lot about in my second book, Embrace Your Greatness, the gig economy that is coming up, the knowledge based economy that is coming up. So I was pushed to say, you know what, what are the skill sets and mindset of people who can be able to make transition? then it gave birth to this book. Someone listening to you may not know what you mean by the gig economy. What yes. is that? The gig economy is we are moving from just working nine to five. We are moving to content creation. It's a gig. Like I'm going a DJ gig, mm. you know, a speaking gig. Mm. It's the gig economy. People now are not, not doing the three-year contract. Mm. People are giving you a month contract to come mm. and consult and you go. Mm. Then you go to do something somewhere. You do photography, you do content creation, you do marketing. All these are gig economy. Mm. We are moving from just oh my God, if I can find a job that I can be able to be in for 10 years. No, it's 10 mm. months now. Mm. It's 10 days now. Mm. So people are not able to make that transition because mm. that transition means now a high level of refining your skill set so mm. that people can really choose you to be the best among the best. Okay. You need to refine yourself. You okay. need to be amazing. Let's break it down. Let's start with uh, the need to specialize on value creation. That's the first nugget that you are sharing with the people in this book. 
Can you simplify that for us? All right. There, there are people today who are thinking the job market like the way they used to do them before. Oh, well, I found a job, then I'm good to go for 10 years. Mm. But today, you know, what the job market is doing is it is seeding. There's a seed mm. of what value are you going to bring to my organization? Mm. You know, it's no longer about, oh, I can do anything. No, actually, what can you do? What value can you bring to our organization? Is it, is it speaking? Is it consulting? Is it bookkeeping? What is it? So if employees today, those are term amazing. They don't just do anything. No, I can do just anything. Please, I'm just looking for something to kill time. Mm. They know the value they are going to create. They've already identified your need in your organization before they come in. So they come to create a gap, to fill that gap that is within your organization. They are not coming to fill the number of people let's take, who are sitting uh, let's down. Let's take yeah. someone who might be an intern, a young lawyer, and a young accountant. So how do they create value when they come into a new organization? All right, come into a new organization and the ability to assess where is the organization not doing well? Mm. Because some of them, you know, the man, the reason why this book outside is their attitude and mindset. You know, some people have the attitude that I'm just an intern, so why should I bother going an extra mile? I'm just here for a short time. Why should I make money for people? Mm. Without realizing that, you know, by creating value, you are actually sometimes cultivating a niche which tomorrow you can be a consultant in, mm. not an employee. Absolutely. You are cultivating a niche which tomorrow you can actually set a consulting firm, not going to work for that organization. Mm. Because the moment you identify the pain points of individuals, mm. whether it's a work environment, whether it's an organization, you are able to create a specific value. Mm. And the more value you create, the more currency comes your way. Mm. So, so that is the way. So, so I, I th I'm sorry to pin you down, but yeah. what does the young accountant or young lawyer actually do to, to, to notice that this is value creation, this is this is different. Um, one thing we do in this show is to practicalize yeah. our, everything that yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. Mm. So what, what, one of the, the most crucial thing is within organizations, mm. you know, there are certain standards that, you know, employers have to say, if we say we are doing well, this is the standard we are looking at you for, your, for right? There, there is the time frame that you give for a person to say, you know what, we work from nine to five, you know, we work only during weekdays, you know. The ability to identify that organizations are going through transition and asking relevant people who lead organizations to say, but I know my job scope is to do books. Mm. I know my scope is to be a receptionist. But what more do mm. will, will you need me to do to create value on my free time so that I can be able to help this organization to turn around? Organizations don't fail because only of the leaders. Mm. They fail because some of the employees are not you know, doing their roles. They're and they're prepared to go the extra mile. So always prepare yourself to go to an extra mile. Mm -hmm. That is very key in helping the organizations to thrive. And once you do that, you put yourself in a place where you cannot be replaceable because you create value to this organization. And not only that, it's not only for your business leaders you are trying to impress. Mm -hmm. There are people who come to your organization every day. Mm -hmm. And as you keep helping them, they can identify, this is a person that I can work with. Mm. Now you are creating potential employers and potential business partners. Brilliant. I like that. You say the one thing they have to do is to suffocate their distractions. Are you talking about social media? This is number one. <laughs> it has actually been shown that 87% of employees today, they are distracted because of social medias and their phones. Part of them is, you know, short coffee meetings, uh, short coffee breaks, and going to smoke. Some of them become very long. Some of them become <laughs> very long mm. because people don't want to do their work. And I like the statement that one gentleman once said, the easiest thing today to, to do today is to be distracted. Mm. Many people are being distracted. I was reading an article from distracted drivers to distracted workers, where they were talking about how many employees today are not able to create the value they are hired to do because when they get to the office on Monday, all talk is about the weekend. All talk is about the, the, the vacation they had. And they don't have time to create the value they say they were hired to do. All talk, no action. In places like restaurants, we say employees should leave their, you know, their you know, smartphones. And when they come to work, they should forget about the smartphones. Do you think that uh, behavior should be adopted by other businesses? 
business do differ, business model do differ. Today, you know, we are in the new normal. Your meeting is on your WhatsApp. Your meeting is on something. There are so many other modes of distractions, such as stress. You know, people come to work without the proper mindset. They are at work, but they're not at work. Mm. So these are other underlying factors that you tap into. If your business deals with hands-on, mm. then phones away. If your business deals with a certain kind of criteria that you use on your day-to-day -day life, mm. then you, you, we know what distractions are. These are the things you are doing which you are not supposed to be doing on your day's agenda. So really, uh, confiscating the phone is not the answer? It's not the answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always the it's answer? It's not always the answer, yes. Okay, so it differs from... Uh, it differs from one organization to another. Okay, you say they make rational and not just emotional decisions. Can you give, give an example of an emotional decision versus a rational decision? In, in this book, I, I talked about John. John was my friend. We were working in a construction company. And, and this construction company between uh, Tune Dam, carrying water pipelines from Tune to the northeast, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And one summer evening, we, we were in the afternoon, we were waking and he was just so tired. And, and one of the leaders made a comment to say, you know what, when I'm gonna, you are not working, you should get back to work. And John didn't respond the way we know him to. Mm -hmm. He said some things, say, Lord, they were out of emotions and not out of rational thinking. I hope he didn't insult the employer. He insulted the employer. Mm. And well to say, you know what, uh, if anyone has to make any decision, they can make whatever decision they make. I cannot be a whatever slave, you know. Mm. And he ended up losing his job. Mm -hmm. And there are so many other instances today where many people today in their workplaces, many people today in their relationships, they lose the thing they have worked for for over time because they allowed their emotions to get on their way. It's what Les Brown said, if you don't control the emotions, they will use you. Mm. Many people today, they, they lack... Their them. egos take over. Ego is taking over. Mm. And emotional intelligence today in this ever-changing job market is one of the sought-after skill set mm. that people need to develop. Your ability to control your emotions and the emotions of others mm. is very key. So amazing employees, what they do is there are pressures everywhere. There are deadlines to meet, but they are not reacting to every situation but how do you emotions. how do you develop the skill to be responding as opposed to reacting i think that's what um, john maxwell describes as true. where you have been responsible mm. response able able yeah. to respond able to respond yeah. as opposed to just re, you know reacting yeah so how do you develop that skill all right uh, to get into a space of responding not reacting is what i call a reflective nature mm. you reflect you don't react you reflect, this happened, what does it mean? Because sometimes we take things personal, even if they were not personal. So when you reflect on issues, and it's a split second decision, it's not something you're going to say, okay, I'm going to, to reflect. Some people can say painful ways to you, mm. but as you train over time, mm. there are emotional intelligence courses that are available for people to subscribe to, for people to learn on how they can use their emotions. You know, there are so many truths. You know, one of the truths about emotions is that you are not an emotion. Many people say, I am angry. You mm. are not angry. You feel angry. Mm -hmm. you, uh, emotions. So it's important to separate yourself to from se the feeling. Exactly. The emotion. Exactly. Mm. Because when you, you attach it to yourself, when people say anything now, it's like they are talking about you. Mm. So you are not able to reflect. One of the things, again, is that emotions, just like kids, they want attention. You need to establish and say, I feel angry. I feel, you know, overwhelmed. I feel scared to start this, this presentation. This is the first time in my life I've had uh, emotions being compared to kids. But I think you are right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So they need attention. Yeah. They so need you, need to, you need to, to identify mm. what emotion am I feeling right now. Okay. So that is that. So will this require special courses? How does an employee empower themselves to get in the right place? Yeah, there, there, there are so many online free courses. If you go to Coursera.com, there are thousands. Say of that again. Coursera. Okay. Coursera.com. How do you spell that? C O U R S E R A. Mm -hmm. Coursera.com. Mm -hmm. There are thousands of courses available emotional intelligence, leadership, self development, personal branding. All of them are available for free. On, online? Online. YouTube or just. It, it's online. Google you go general. to you Google and then you, you are able to access the videos. Okay. and. So there's no lessons. excuse to remain ignorant. Today anymore. we live in the knowledge based economy. Mm. The difference between you and the next person is what do you know that they don't know? Because so you need to be on your toes in developing yourself. Okay. 
Now, let's talk about empathetic listening because it's one of the traits. Yeah. Uh, how do you cultivate empathetic listening? First of all, describe what it is and then tell me how you cultivate it. Yes, empathetic listening is hearing the words that are not said, hearing the emotions behind the words. You know, the ability to give someone time to listen to what they are saying without the rush to respond. Many people today, they are busy to listen. And the day they don't hear what has to be said is the day when the organization is going to fail. The day when they don't listen to what the employees on ground are saying is the day they are in board meetings and they implement things which are not relevant to what's on ground. Mm. So the ability to take time off, mm. yes, everyone has something to say. The social media has taught us one thing, Mr. Mogobe. Mm. You can post whatever you want. Mm. So we are posting, we are not listening. Yeah. So most of the time, that's what happens in our workplaces. Mm. We are constantly wanting to share something. Even if there is someone who can actually share something, we can help all of us. Mm. Our egos get on our way to share whatever we want to share. Mm. And therefore, empathetic listening is not just listening. It's hearing the emotions behind the way. Going it's deeper. Going deeper to understand why someone is saying what they are saying. Mm. And that is what differentiates amazing employees from just any other employee. Mm. Many people can hear you, but not, any people, not many people can understand your deeper meaning of what you're talking about. Mm. So it's about being able to train yourself to say, what can I learn when, you know, this, this morning I was talking about critical thinking, leading a coaching for one organization, mm. critical thinking and effective communication. Mm. That effective communication, many people today, they are just agreeing to what you are saying, mm. but they don't really get why you are saying what you are saying. So empathetic listening goes beyond just agreeing to someone. Is it, a, is it something you cultivate? It is something you cultivate mm. over time. Because what the world is doing today is we are constantly reacting on a passive manner. I see a post I like, then I pass to like another one. Mm. That's what happens with communication organizations today. Mm. People are not really listening to you. They are just allowing you to talk so that they can listen to the next person to talk. Mm -hmm. So it's something that we can really cultivate and learn. And a course that I, 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 I advise on that, that is something that I teach on effective communication. Mm. That is what people can do. Okay, what, what does one have to do to get into that course? Because it's very relevant to this story of uh, empathetic listening. Okay, they, they can just contact us, Mumpuliki Magwana, and then we can give you a sub list of the courses that are available that we do coaching on. Okay, we'll, yes. we'll talk about that at the end also. All right. Now, the importance of building and valuing and building and empowering professional relationships. They value and they build empowering professional relationships. Uh, can you uh, unpack that for me, please? One of the things that I did when I was working my nine to five before mm. I left to do my business is one key important element that I was taught by my mentor was fall in love in relationship building. People buy from people. People don't buy the brands. Mm -hmm. Today we, 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 we talk about the thought leadership concept where now people are saying, I'm going to buy from Tesla because of this gentleman. Mm. I'm going to buy from Facebook because, because of, of Elon Musk. So Elon Musk. it's the people that we see mm. that, 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 that represent the value that we want to go for. Mm -hmm. People come to buy because it's Mr. Mugobe behind this thing. So amazing employees, what they do is they are not just coming to work to do what they have to do and just go. Many people do that. Mm. And what ends up happening is even tomorrow after this one employee leaves to be the head of HR in one organization, they don't have that cell number. They don't even know their email address. So relationship building is where to go today. If you build relationships, you can build your professional you know, career. You can build your business. You can build your organization. So they value and build professional relationships. We are not saying be friends with everyone, but to know what's, what someone likes, to know what, what interests them, to know what makes them tick, that's very crucial in today because what is going to help us to succeed in today's economy is the relationship we have built, mm. the symbiotic so relationship. You network, create networks. You create professional networks. Mm. Many people have networks today, but they are not professionally. Mm. That's why they don't have jobs, mm -hmm. because they don't have professional networks of people who can help them to put their professional you know, image or profile in a right manner. Yeah. On the subject of building professional relationships and networking, yeah. I was reading a book by Curtis Jackson, uh, also known as 50 Cents, yeah. where he he talks about the difference that, that made the difference for him. 
was going for internships even when he was not paid. Yeah. Because he said the one thing you get by going to businesses and offering yourself for internship is you get in invaluable advice and information, even if your job is just to provide the tea. Virtual. And he says that the problem with that is that some people say it's exploitation. They have been made to work for free. And he says, forget about that. Focus on the learning and the wisdom that you acquire and the, and the employability that you develop as a result. What are your thoughts? I think I agree with him. Uh, you, know, you know why he's talking like that? He's mm -hmm. saying focus on creating this relationship and working for free because he has the end in mind. Mm. He has somewhere he's going. Many people, the reason why they will say, no, I'm not going to do this, I uh, can't do things for free, is because they're not patching up into any bigger vision. Mm. They don't have a larger vision for themselves that this is where I am going. You know, when you know where you are going, I, I was laughing, Mr. Mogobi, recently, because my whole idea is to build a very strong, you know, consulting firm when it comes to your workplace effectiveness. Mm. And I approached one organization, I said to them, look, uh, during this COVID, I would like to do this for free on employee engagement. I will do everything, assessment forms and everything will work with you. They said, yes, come for a meeting. I went for a meeting, they say, no, we are willing to pay for all this work that you do. Hmm. My approach was... If you had not offered that for free, you would never have, they would never have appreciated the value. They would never even have considered no. us for training our employees. So the opportunities are always waiting on the other side of that curtain. Mm -hmm. And the, you can only open that curtain when you have something to offer, the value to offer. People who always want money, you know there are individuals, when you want to work with them, they even forget about charging you. You already find them already in the works of things, in the mix of things, getting things done and fixing things. Oh, this is the problem you are having. And you end up being compelled to say, you know what, I want to work with this mm. young man or young lady. But today we have people folding their arms and say, what is in for me? What mm. are you providing? Put the money in first. What are you providing? Mm. So it's, it's every relationship when we approach it with what value am I going to create? What relationship, what, 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 what information am I going to give to this person? Mm. That's very crucial. And we are looking for that. We are looking for symbiotic relationship, professional relationship for people who are not just coming to take and take and take. Yeah, Zig Ziglar used to say, some people look for the heat before they put the wood. That's the thing. Putting the food in the <laughs> fire first. Exactly. And then you'll get the heat. That's the truth. Not the other way yeah. around. Let's talk about blaming and complaining. You said it is not their area of specialization. I, I hate blaming and complaining <laughs> yeah. myself. I prefer taking responsibility. Yeah. I believe that one should identify the problem and address it. But blaming and talking about it doesn't work. But I'm sure you have your thoughts on the matter. Yes, the same way you have your thoughts. Mm. I normally say to people, what are the things that you can blame and complain about today? Just take 30 minutes and do that. And then after that now, you have blamed and it's done. Nothing changes. Get it off your system. Get so. it off your system. Mm. Last brand will say, move on, get on mm. with your life. Yeah. So I think the element of blaming and complaining, people have not understood that when you take responsibility, you actually get better. You actually improve. Your thinking improves. The way you perceive things and the way you improve things really improved. Mm. I, I think when you grow up, or you, you find yourself in a community or work environment where people are always looking up to you. They, are, they look up to you because you take responsibility. You are willing to hold yourself accountable. And once you put yourself in that state, you become irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. You can go anywhere and still create value because very few people today can be able to say, it's my fault. Okay. What can I do now? I've heard of a technique where someone says, look, for every, every time I complain, or I blame somebody, yeah. I pay one puller uh, into a, into <laughs> in, a jar. In jar yes. Do you believe that method can work for Botswana? <laughs> Seeing the <laughs> amount of uh, coins that are piling up in the jar, they stop complaining. They won't pile because they will not be making any money complaining. Mm. They will not even have the one plus to put in. Yeah. But the concept is very crucial to show you that actually this is what it amounts to. Mm. The value you could give instead of complaining and focusing on delivering value. And, and I want to share this. Sometimes it's not your fault. But taking responsibility in, empowers you. Mm. 
Mm. Sometimes you are not the person who did that thing. Mm. But rising up and say, look, I didn't do this, but I'm willing to do one, two, three to work on this. Mm. It actually positions you much better mm. because life is too short to be sitting down and hoping that someone else will do something. Mm. So putting yourself as a person who is going to create value at all times, you are looking for people who are blaming. You know why businesses are growing, organizations are growing today through the COVID. Some people are making billions. It's because there are people who are, who are giving market research for free. They are mm -hmm. complaining about what can be done. And there are mm -hmm. people who are taking those complaints and doing something Elon about it. Elon Musk tripled his worth. And uh, the other guy, Amazon guy. Amazon, yes. Yeah, he, he, he doubled his worth. Zoom and as the, well. Yeah, you know, they, unbelievable. That's unbelievable. The yeah. In Botswana, I wonder who's making serious money. <laughs> the guy who does sanitizers, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. But uh, let's go further and talk about being results-oriented. Um, not just talking a, to be talk oriented. Tell me the difference between results oriented and talk oriented. There are just people who specialize on this can be done, this can be improved, our economy can be done this way. And there are people who are actually on the ground and doing something. Mm. I, 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 I illustrated in the book about an example of in, in Harvard. This is the book he's referring yeah, to. The, what amazing employees do. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I illustrated an example where two groups of people were given an assignment to work on. Mm. They were given time to deliver on. And what ended up happening was the professionals, people with PhDs, they were in one group. And we have the other side, kindergarten kids in other group. Mm. And they were given an assignment and a time frame of this much shall be done. Mm. The kindergarten kids won. Because as soon as they were given an assignment, they were hands on, mm. doing and trying to fix things up. Mm. So when they end up, the PhDs were still debating about which concept works. I think they're also engaging works. In, in the PhD syndrome. In the PhD pull, syndrome. Pull him down. Pull him down. In my head. I know. This is what I researched on. Mm. So, you know, one of the things that one book that I read mm. is The Vibrant Workplace uh, by one gentleman. I forgot his name. And he was talking about this syndrome where people don't get much done. Mm. He said, you know, communication is like apes in the forest. When one ape jump into action, it inspires other apes to join in. Mm. Within a sudden, they are all in a rhythm and moving. Mm. And that's the same with human connection and human interaction. People replace doing things with talking. Mm. All talk, no action. All ideas, no progress. That is why we are where we are today with our economy. Mm. Because everyone can share what can be done. Mm. But very few people can be standing up and say, this is what we are doing. So amazing employees are not people who are watching. There are people who are in action. Just them or whatever. But they are going to create value and build businesses after businesses. Wow, that's beautiful. I really like that. Um, another point is uh, to identify and leverage on their strengths and then create incredible results. I also, I, when you respond to these questions, Mr. Marquan, I want yeah. you to give practical examples as All well. Right. Because people are really looking for something they can hang on to. Very true. Yes. One of the examples I open this book, it opens with stories mm. for practical people because I realized that it's something that you have to practicalize. Mm. So one thing that I did is in every opening chapter, mm. there's a practical story that I talked about. In mm. this book, I talked about Lisa, who had the issue of not being able to speak before people. And she said to me, you know, this thing is really affecting me because it does not allow me to do what I need to do in my job. Mm. And when she did our career corner program, and we worked on strength assessment. We did strength assessment for her. And after doing that, helping her to focus on what she's really good at, a week later, or it, it was a month later, she called me to say, you know what? My, my senior manager called me to come and represent him in one of the high level meetings. Because you were right. Once I focused on what I was good at, once I started focusing on what I was, I was doing that, I ended up building confidence. And sooner or later, I was able even to present before people. The mm. fear of speaking before people has now dissipated or has gone away because I focused on what I was good at. And that courage now is doing what we call, you know, spiritual shape shifting. You are wow. good with this thing. Now you take the same energy you are good with this thing and you apply within that thing. Mm. So when we talk about now, mm leveraging on your strength. We are not just focusing on, you know what, uh, I'll, what you like to do, but mm. we have strength assessment test that helps you to really find out what you are really good at. Mm. And it shares with you the top five themes mm. that helps you to say, you are a developer, Mr. Magwana. You develop people, you cultivate people's skills. This mm. is what you do. And once you start focusing on that, as I work with different teams and we do this test, people start having a vibrant workplace. Why? Because now they understand each other. 
they understand wow. why Mohobe do the, the way the things he does them because it's embedded in them these are their natural skills and talents okay and of course they are constantly creative and they upskill themselves in other words they believe in continuous learning continuous improvement is the way mm. growth is life mm. the day we stop improving is the day we stop earning and the day we stop being relevant mm. many people today the only thing they have is the certificate they did 10 years ago mm. not even a short course mm. and they expect that as this job market evolve they can get opportunities with that one certificate and you have news for them and i have news for them <laughs> what? it's not possible it's yeah. never going to be possible mm. for you this environment what's happening is you know the gentleman shared some important ways maybe you may remember his name he said the illiterate of the 21st centuries are not those who cannot read and write mm. are those who cannot learn and learn and relearn mm -hmm. those who can unlearn old processes and systems that jobs you can only get it by waiting in the inside of house and say one day i will get a job Mm. moving from the cultural norms of saying uh, I know so and so they will hire me no people yeah. are now looking at different skill set the package how do you package yourself mm. as an individual how do you package your skill set do you have a demonstrable skill set that people can see and say wow we saw you do this hiring you because they saw you do something not what you are saying mm. everyone can say something in their CVs Mr. Mohobe it's those with demonstrable skill set that we are going to call forth and say well this is the person that we want to work with. Mm, mm. Relationships are established as we are in the field doing the work. So it's very crucial that you expose your creativity. You don't just hope that people understand that you are creative. Wow, this is great. This is beautiful stuff. I could let you go on and on and on. Yes. Um, now, you talk about constant, constant upskilling. So what is your advice to an employee out there? How often and how regularly should they be getting new course, into new courses and acquiring new certificates and new, uh, new skills? That's a very powerful question. You know why? Mm. Because today when we think about the job market in Botswana, mm. it's, it's going to be dangerous when you think job market in Botswana because what the gig economy is doing and the knowledge-based economy is doing and the fourth industrial revolution is doing is that now Botswana is becoming a global scale. Mm. Now, people outside Botswana that are competing with jobs in Botswana mm -hmm. because they can do them online. Mm -hmm. Now, you are not only competing with me in Botswana, you're competing with the global market mm -hmm. of people who are searching for jobs. And w w Career Guide, they have shown that by 2050, 75% of the skill set we know today, they will be absolute. Mm. So they are... I mean, obsolete. Obsolute. Yeah, yeah. That's a tricky word. Obsolete. <laughs> obsolete. Obsolete. Yeah. They will no longer be relevant. Yeah. And therefore, as an employee, as an employee, as an, as an employer, you need to be finding out the researches that are coming right now. The skill set, which the most sought after skill set. Mm. What knowledge should employees know today? So if you are able to be in the gist of things and say, okay, this is what opportunities are coming for. I was reading a book by a South African lady. It's, it's called Disrupt Yourself or Be Disrupted. Mm. So you need to find out what skill set today employers are looking for. Because businesses today which we're serving, they are becoming irrelevant as well. Mm. So you will need to move from one you know, industry to a whole new industry you don't know today. Mm -hmm. That tomorrow, other firms that we never knew are going to be opening doors for hiring. So we need to be up to toes with understanding the current news, what's coming, what's changing, what's evolving. Employees need to be on their toes in finding out what skills that they need to cultivate today. Mm. Oof, that's quite a mouthful. So, so really it's continuous learning and improvement. Yes. Now what do, does an employer do when you see that this particular employee is not improving themselves <laughs> and they are constantly complaining and not improving themselves? I know that during the uh, the lockdown and during the state of emergency, you cannot retrench. But what do employers do? Uh, we know what amazing employee. Well, you realize this is not an amazing employee. It doesn't qualify. Yeah. yeah. What do we do? How do we move forward? And here's the funny part. Mm. The, the other half of this book I wrote about when amazing employees are not amazing anymore. Mm. When now they are toxic, mm. they are negative, always complaining recruiting other members to talk about employers, recruiting other members not to create value, but to complain. Mm. 
Mm. That, you know, I, I even borrowed the words of the gentleman who, uh, who wrote the book, The Vibrant Workplace. He said, sooner or later, you have to let them go. Sooner or later, you have to create a space for other people who are willing to express that skill set. How do you do that? Yes, this is where I'm going mm -hmm. in. Because sometimes, because there, there is the two parts. Mm -hmm. There is when amazing employees are led by bad managers. Mm -hmm. And then there are when amazing um, employees are not amazing at all. So I will assume in this instance that as an employer, you are creating incentives where you are opening up space for professional development. Mm -hmm. You are availing opportunities to them for them to go and do these short courses mm -hmm. because they, 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 they are, there's money for that mm -hmm. where companies can train their employees and they are paid back. Mm -hmm. So if they are not taking what's available and you see that I recommended you to do this course, mm -hmm. but today you are not offering a better customer service, mm -hmm. then we have an agreement. Or, or, or in a case where you offer them opportunities for training, you tell them that, the levy is available. Yeah. And none of them activates that. Not, none of them makes it happen. When it is within their power to write the letter, to make the phone call, to make these things happen. What does an employer do? Because I have those challenges. Perhaps I'm asking for myself. <laughs> yes. Uh, at the end of the day, if you want your business to grow, you need to find growing people. Mm. So you have, you know, you know what, what this job market is doing, like I always say, more a lot on career corner, is is sieving the best from the, the, the worst. Mm. And it's going to challenge us emotionally, psychologically, and resourceful-wise. Mm. So individuals today and business leaders today are looking at individuals who are growing and are willing to create value and more resources for the organization. Mm -hmm. And therefore, people who are not creating value, whether we like or we value them, we will have to let them go. Mm -hmm. Because this job market any organization which is not growing, it is going to go out of the market. Mm. And growth comes from, you know, like I always say a lot, my statement is, you know, organizational growth comes from employee growth. Mm. Employees which are not growing, they are leading to the death of the organization. You choose whether you are going for the death of the organization or you have to let go of people who are not willing to challenge themselves. Mm. Because I know the symptom, you know, you know, this system in our, in our culture where people like to feel like they are owed something and for the fact that you hired them to come and do test mentality. entitlement mentality. Mm. And they don't look at a job like, this person have not seen me before. They are giving me an opportunity to test my skill set for free mm. in their work environment. Mm. And when they don't have that attitude mm. and that mindset to see a job as a growth opportunity, or a, you know, venture, mm. then you have to let them go. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. Said as it is, but it's very true. It is. Now, this is the, the last item that we want to focus on, which is not about the job, it's about me attitude. You're saying th those, you know, they have, it is not about me. It is not about the... You no, know, let me get it out. Yes. It is not about the job, it is about me attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Can you break that down? Can you, can you simplify it for us? All right. The attitude of amazing employee is when you give them a job, they are not much onto the job. Mm. They are on to developing themselves. They go an extra mile and knock off late, not because for you, mm. but because they are hungry to develop themselves and see themselves somewhere. Mm -hmm. they, they come early at work, provide exceptional customer service, not for you, not for the job, mm. but because they are exceptional people. Mm -hmm. They are go-getter people. They, they have the hunger mm. not to accept things as they are. And therefore, when you have that kind of attitude, you know, when it's about the job, Mr. Mohobe, when it knocks five, by 4.49, you are out of the office, you are, you are going home. Mm. When it's about the job, you know, when, when, when people don't pay, you're like, ah, I'm not going to do this thing, I'm going. Mm. But when it's about you, you sit down and say, what is this teaching me? What knowledge am I acquiring from this? What skill set am I building because of this job? It's what J.F. Kennedy talked about, the, the, the former U.S. president. Ask mm. not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Mm. You know, when, when, when you approach a job market or a job opportunity as, you know what, I'm looking forward to add value to this business. Mm. I'm looking forward to be a rock star employee, creating money and revenue for this business. People can look at you and say, you are an exceptional employee. Mm. But on the other hand, there are people who only deliver value when bosses are there. There are people who only deliver value when everyone is watching, when the media is on the business. But when no one is there, they don't hold themselves accountable to a higher standard level of excellence. Mm. Amazing employees, they are amazing 
not because they want people to see them, but because that's who they are. They attach their identity to whatever they do. Wonderful, wonderful. I, I really love that. Okay, let's um, let's let's conclude by with a bonus point. Uh, they always more than they always do more than what they are paid for. In other words, they go the extra mile. Yeah. And they are, have, there's no mentality of yeah. mm. Break that down or develop that somewhere. Uh, the mentality. Examples if yeah. You can. The mentality of I'm only going to do as much as I'm paid mm. is that yeah, I was talking about this today. Mm. It's about you know uh, brain uh, customizing. It's about brain programming. Mm. You are programming yourself that you will always do as long as this happens. Mm. And what ends up happening with those people is that as soon as they leave that job where they were doing that mentality, mm. they have no other space to go. Because, because they have not been developing themselves. Because they have not been developing themselves. They are stuck in one place. They are stuck in one place. They, are, they, they go through what we call standard growth in agriculture. We call it standard growth. <laughs> you, you are not growing. Mm. You are just short. Mm. And, and what ends up happening is that when you go from that bubble where you were just people cushioning you, not cushioning a, a, you getting a predictable salary, avoiding to, put, put to harm your feelings. Effort, yeah. When you leave that job, you are going to see the reality of the job market today. Mm. Because the job market today is not for those who are willing to pay it. People now are looking for skill sets so that they can enterprise that skill set. Yes. But when the only skill set you have is only matching your job with your salary. <laughs> and no one is looking for that. So intentional people who do more than they are paid to do, they end up getting promotion because we know Mr. Makwana can go and extra mile. He can even do beyond what he's hired to do. What kind of employees do we, we promote? Mm -hmm. We promote people who we see, they even do extra than what we hire them to do. Mm -hmm. So we promote your value. We don't promote you as a person. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to be promoted. Mm -hmm. But we don't promote everyone who wants to be promoted. We promote people who can do more than what we hire them to do. So we are creating a space to say, look, uh, we have boxed you. Mm -hmm. We want you to come to the big league now. We want you to be offering as a manager. Why? Because you are doing more than what you are paid. And, and Les Brown puts it this way. People who do more than what they are paid, sooner or later they are paid more than what they do. Wonderful, wonderful. People who do more than they are paid mm. will sooner or later be, be paid, paid more, more than, than, than what they, they do. do. Yeah. That's a beautiful statement. Because now what they are doing is they are creating value mm. and value calls on currency. Currency is a flow. You know, when you hold back, you, you miss the, the life's most important principle. It's the flow. Life is flow. Mm. Life is flow. So the day you don't want to do an extra work because, oh, but mm. it's the day you miss an opportunity because someone is watching you, not your boss. Mm. Your boss can see you, but someone sees you. Mm. Tomorrow you go for, 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 for interview. That is that someone. Wow. Um, I cannot stop this uh, interview without talking about the specific crisis we are going through, the pandemic and how it has hit us in Botswana. Yeah. What can the listener or the viewer watching now, feeling despondent, feeling downgraded, pick from this interview? Can you give them some inspirational message, something to go away with in the circumstances of today's world, where we're talking about massive unemployment, we're talking about situations where even restaurants are empty, there's an alcohol ban, and there's a danger of another lockdown any minute. All right. What I want to share with our viewers today is this. The, the COVID epidemic has leveled the playground for all. So people who used to think, I cannot go into this industry because some people have been in this industry for 10 years. I cannot start this business because people have been in this. I cannot go into this job segment because of that. It is level for all. We mm. are all seeing this for the first time. Mm. And people who are going to be successful are not those who are lucky. They are those who do it by choice. Who are saying, you know, with all this happening, I want you to sit at home and ask yourself, with all this happening, where is my sport? Because I think the, the lockdown and all this has given us so much time to go into ourselves and really identify what we really need. Because as a coach, I see a lot of people who are saying, Mr. Makwana, you know, this lockdown and this COVID has taught me one thing. I've always wanted to do this, but I want to do it now. It has been a wake-up call for all. And it's uncomfortable, as uncomfortable as can be. There are opportunities that are going to rise out of that. 
you know, crisis in, I, do, I don't know if the Japanese or the Chinese one. The one I know is the Chinese one. Which means? The, the character for crisis and opportunity. It's, it's an opportunity. Yeah. It's an opportunity, yes. Mm. It's an opportunity. And like I like saying, crisis is an, provides informal education. This is when we are all in the school. A year later, two years later, there are people you never thought would go into business who are going to disrupt business in Botswana. And they are only going to do that when they calmly look at this and say, what is emerging? What are people complaining about? What are the pain points? And you start creating opportunities from there. You know, rich people today, they are looking at this and say they are waiting to invest in different investments. And they only do that by analyzing the environment that is happening right now. This has leveled the playground. You may not have resources, you may not have a job, but out of this, an opportunity is going to come for you. But it cannot come if you are not intentional looking for them. Because the truth of the matter is, whatever you are looking for is also looking for you. It's you doing your part, rising up and say, what can I create? Once you start asking yourself those intentional questions, there's an answer that is going to come and follow up with it. Thank you, Mr. Makwana. It remains for me to thank you very much. But before we part, I'd like you to encourage your viewers to watch the, the Nuggets of Wisdom. I'd also like for you to tell them how they can contact you and how they can get hold of this book. All right. Uh, our viewers, uh, please make sure you subscribe to the Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom. Make sure you share this information. It can change someone's life. My life changed because of information. That's why Eric Thomas says information changes situations. You can get my copies of my book by order at Mumbuliki Makwana, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Mumbuliki Makwana. Copies are also available at exclusive <coughs> books at uh, Airport Jackson Mall. Airport Jackson, yeah, yeah, exclusive okay. books at Airport Jackson Mall. So you can co get copies there. So if you're looking for uh, training for your employees, you're looking for career development, we have a program called Career Corner. Make sure you contact us and we'll help you. My number is 7477619674776196. 7477-6196. Thank you, dear viewer, dear uh, listener, thank you, member of the audience. Thank you so much for taking the time out. Let me just remind you once again, just Mr. M like Mr. Makwana has just said, please subscribe and be sure to join us next time. Thank you. This is Mumbuluki Luruma Mohobe, the namesake of Mr. Makwana, <laughs> signing off. Thank you, sir.